Hello, hello. What's up, guys? I'm gonna wait just a little bit. Uh, get all settled in here. Make sure the stream's looking good before we get started. I got a good, pretty good one for you guys today. Uh, some information that most people don't think of when it comes to being fast. And like I said, these videos are all for, like I said, live videos. Get on, talk about the uh, content for about 10, 15, sometimes even longer, depending on how, ex how excited I am about it. Um, but the goal of these are to teach you guys as much as I can. Obviously, I've learned a lot. Don't claim to know everything. I've learned a lot over the last couple of years with this car, everything like that, everyone I've hung out with. I want to relay that information to you. Hopefully, you guys will be able to learn um, from me as much as I've learned in the last however long. But it just keeps getting this ball stuck underneath the TV, so we'll see how long that lasts. But anyways, Wednesdays, get on, talk about the content for just a little bit, and then maybe talk some shit afterwards. As these get bigger, more people get on, more people jump in, just get on, hang out, have a good time. What are you doing? Back up. Plats. Plats. It's stuck all the way back there. So basically, today's video is about why do fast, like why do cars that look fast are fast. When we think of a fast car, what do you think of? You're thinking of bigs and skinnies usually, you're looking at some type of drag wing, gutted, you know, like a drag car. Uh, and that's kind of what we get into today. Uh, for me, it's the arrow. This is a huge thing that people overlook. Uh, when you, let's say, like, obviously I've brought this up to other people before and they always freak out like, oh, well, I'm not road course, I'm not road course. And well, think about it. Top field dragsters, big old wing on the back, Basically, IndyCar's nose up front. They keep it planted. Make sure that it slips through the air very quickly, but it still is very, very planted. Look at funny cars. Look at X275 cars. They have drag wings on them. I'll explain the difference between behind that. What up? What up? Rabbit racing in the house. Dallas, Texas. Cool. Cool. Um, he's pouting. I don't know if you can see him. It's not going to let me tilt the camera. Absolutely pouting because his ball stuck. So basically, let's think of the normal. So the reason why I wanted to bring this up was most people don't go to any type of aero package to begin with. Think of the normal progression of a car. If you've had a car, your friends have had a car, what's the first thing you do? Add power. Get in the car, you drive it, you enjoy it for maybe a day. Maybe you already have a mods bought before you even bought the car. Get in the car, immediately make more power. You get to a point. Very rarely do you ever just like, oh, that's enough. You get to a point, you're like, you know what? I want more. Then you break through basically what the car can hold. You throw tires on it. Tires aren't quite, like you, you get break to the point of past the tires. Then you move towards suspension. What do you do after suspension? Stuff like that. Then you usually take weight out of the car. Well, once you're to a point to where the car is just some tin can, you know, rattling, the wind will blow it over. What do you do after that? Then you start getting into like the aero, things like that. Um, why do you think X275 cars have, like, they have special noses, they have special rear wings, the diffusers, everything is designed to have not so much, they're designed to have downforce for the car without a drag penalty, so that it slips through, goes as fast as possible without taking flight. You see every once in a while cars take flight, um, but these cars making 2,500 horsepower in the quarter mile, like going down the quarter mile, they have to make sure they stick to the road. Suspension plays a huge, huge part of that as well. Uh, so if you guys saw at the picture of my main screen, it was the my GT500 uh, when it had the drag wing on it and then a friend's Cobra Jet. Yes, the green Cobra Jet. Sorry, I couldn't remember there for a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to get into... I don't know if you could hear him. He was just kind of growling there because he wants his ball it's stuck. But arrow, huge, huge thing that people overlook. And I think it's up there with um, the weight savings. Obviously, I've done, I've had three different wing setup, three different wing setups on my car. I've had a stock wing, I've had a drag wing, and I've had an APR performance wing. In my opinion, each one has had its reasons. But if you want to go fast, which a lot of people I know, like people ask me about drag racing and stuff like that, just throw a drag wing on it. A lot of people say, oh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be uh, that flashy and stuff. But you see them 
like spray painting their entire engine bay, stuff like that. Just do it. Just throw the drag. They make different size drag wings. You don't have to get like an 18 inch drag wing like I had. You can make like a six inch or, some, or something like that to make it to where the car actually performs the way you want it to do. And when it comes to like, I really did feel a difference. So when I first started drag racing, I just had the swing. Ford calls it a swing. It's like a spoiler wing. You guys look it up. You know what I'm talking about. It's basically everyone who's ever put a GT500 bumper on just a normal S550, they always have one on the back. So you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Get on there. The swing, it was pretty good. It was pretty decent for just like overall driving, things like that. It definitely did his job, had a little bit more of a drag penalty than what I thought it should, simply because of how open it was, but it did a decent job. You I ran the car with it off, with the TH400 a little bit. It you, you notice a difference down low. It didn't feel like it had that drag penalty, but above 140, the car was just absolutely skating on the big end. You could feel it. The first pass I ever made without the swing on, I got back and I said, it, it's floating on the big end. Like it, So we put some more air in the tires, thinking that was, that was the issue. If you guys don't know, too little air in the tires. Uh, when you get up on the big end of the track, it'll, the tr car feel like it's floating a little bit. Just wiggling, moving around, just not sturdy. Car did it again the next pass. I'm like, okay, there has to be something. Had a, reached out to some companies, had a wing coming the next day. Took a while for the wing to get here because of supply issues, things like that. But I had a wing coming right away noticed an immediate difference no no real drag penalty i wish i guys could pull up what it looked like it was basically flush this is why i had this car pulled up so basically it was flush with just the deck lid and then where the wing was so it's like just it just basically extended the rear of the car out so you uh, reason for that is it decreases the drag coefficient and it's actually true if you look up the uh, bugatti super sport um the one that the chiron like 300 of course i can't remember the name when i want to the car that set the record and then the yesco absolute both of those manufacturers extended the rear of the car made them longer made them smoother for less drag penalty so it would basically cut through the air easier and that's true mine did have a, just a little curve at the end um didn't do too much but it definitely made a huge difference above 140 that i like i noticed it made this difference um like I came and I wish I wish I could take some of you guys for rides just before and after so you guys could feel the difference. Night and day difference on what just that little drag spoiler or drag wing did. The other wing I did was the APR wing. This one's a little bit better all around. It had a lot more adjustability than the carbon fiber track, track pack spoiler. Basically you could do almost no downforce if you wanted to, or you could put it all the way up and make it like an air brake. So it really did whatever you guys wanted to do. In my opinion, I would say, unless you're going just straight road course, a just keeping the swing would probably be the best option with a little higher gurney flap, which I did the math. If you take the factory gurney flap, extend it two inches out, and then one inch higher, it will have more downforce and less drag than the carbon fiber tracks pack spoiler. When the car first came out, I put this information on the, like some GT500 tech and troubleshooting pages. Stop it. On the uh, GT500 pages, obviously it didn't go anywhere, but it is what it is. If anyone, like if anyone wants to reach out, I can give you the math and stuff like that. It really does. Less drag, more downforce, just like barely extending the gurney flat. Hey, leave it. Got it stuck, now you gotta wait. So, oh, where were we? Yes. So yeah, you guys always, you always see it. Me, people immediately throw power. The, like, the last video was about weight. This one's about aero. Aero definitely is a huge way you guys can make your car quicker without throwing much money on it. I mean, uh, rear wing obviously takes some weight out. Rear wing would be maybe $1,000. Depending on which one you get, there's some that are super cheap. Obviously you want like an awesome carbon fiber one looking around 800. They make some metal ones. Um, so there's a lot of different options you can do. Shoot, you can make one if you want. I know some people have, have made some. Obviously, if you have the means to do that pretty cheap, get away with it, paint it, whatever, and it won't, doesn't look pretty nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, it really is. Uh, 
Sorry guys, I just got a text message about work. Never ends. I know I got my phone up here, but I got my watch down here. So then that way I can I can see if things pop up. Okay, yeah, I can worry about later. So where were we? So with arrow, obviously, air moves basically all around the car. It'll move basically air is everywhere, for those people that don't know. The easiest way to get quicker very, very quickly, uh, you want to block off the front air. Um, I'm always working. Yeah, basically, I am literally, the question's always coming through. It's, it is what it is. Block off the front uh, grip, uh, spoiler grill, stuff like that, the front air dam. You want air to not, to not go really into the car. You want air to go around the car. Um, Ford, even Ford Performance. So the G 2020 GT500 has that big hood vent. Obviously, everyone, as soon as they get the car, they take the air tray out, they take the uh, rain tray out, so the air can just run through the motor up over the car. Ford says for best results, actually leave the rain tray in. We're not... Most people don't read their owner's manual. It literally says right there in the owner's manual. For best drag strip results, leave the rain tray in. So, I mean, just little things like that. Basically, you want to block off all the air you can, have it go around the car. And then you see people doing, like, cutting out the rear diffusers. Obviously, the reason a uh, diffuser is to just get air to rush past the car or rush underneath the car. Um, it's... The lot of, so like the GT diffusers especially uh, trap air real bad. If you see cars moving, if one of the clips kind of detach, you just see them shaking real bad because they're just trapping air. GT 500 rear diffusers are not too bad. There's a lot of holes in them to let air travel through, um, but there is some places that air can get trapped. So mainly, so if you cut out, you know, if you're looking at the back of the car, they'll cut up around the trace of the outline of the bumper, so all that underneath is open. Stop. Get over here. Yep. Is it? So basically, uh, they leave that open. GT500 is fine, especially for the GT owners, stuff like that. You definitely want to cut that out because it's just trapping air, creating a drag coefficient that nobody needs. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you guys really get, get yourself a drag wing, I can't stress enough how much of a difference it made with the car. 140 without one, car felt terrible. Like I hated driving it. With it, I absolutely loved driving the car. It just seemed solid, seemed planted. It didn't seem like I was being slowed down, but the car just 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 went. So there it is. A little bit shorter of a one to, for today. Um, obviously I got through the information a little bit quicker than I wanted, but that's okay. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Feel free to ask. Read through some of these comments, just kind of see. And then we'll just hang out and see what comes up. Three Wednesdays in a row with me being at work and this guy popped up on my phone. Yeah, Wednesdays are probably going to be the day for me unless something else changes. I'm not getting too many views to say a different day would be better than others. So we're just going to do Wednesdays. They work for me and then we'll just go from there. I mean, with my GT350 duck bill uh, actually that's not terrible i mean the so the, the angle of it isn't too bad if that's what you're looking for um it's it'll work for for what you want to do with the car i'm late but i'm here now thanks for checking in uh didn't miss much just talking about different wing setups things like that uh feel free to go back take a look at them beard is going crazy a little bit letting it grow out just a little bit I let it grow up for this. I might as well just let it keep going. So, so let me ask you: for those people that are watching, for those people new to the channel, you might not know. Those people have been here for a while. Which wing setup did you guys like the most? Obviously, I had the stock one. I had that drag one, uh, and then I had obviously a PR one. Let me know. Uh, let me know what you guys thought, and then we'll go from there.
definitely I will have a I have a 10R80 make a 960 I want one with your doors that would look good uh, 10R80 just just works especially around um, especially around like the 960 mark that I won't say that obviously the 10R80 would be bulletproof but once you get above a thousand you definitely have more issues with the trans and stuff like that keeping it around 960 a thousand and just beating on it obviously you're going to run into some issues eventually but i bet that car is just loads of fun to drive the doors definitely save quite a bit of weight that we saw in the last video some people paint them but honestly if you're going to have like exposed carbon fiber weave on the doors just leave them show them off how how about if you remove the wing would that help over 140 so i wish i could pull up a picture of course i don't have anything um I need to get, maybe I'll invest in some more streaming software so I can go like picture and picture on my laptop here. Um, so basically, no, I don't have any other pictures. Basically, the drag wing, uh, removing it over 140 felt terrible. So basically, it was just like a, just a deck lid. Actually, I wonder if I can... You guys will notice I play way too much Forza back in the day. I am very much a visualization person. I have to see everything. If you tell me something, I'm like, I don't know what it looks. Get the sketchbook. I am terrible at drawing. If you want me to draw something, it ain't gonna happen. So here, um, oh shoot. So that rear spoiler setup without it it basically looked like this let me bring the camera over so you guys can see a little better so basically it's just flat this is what i had i ran this setup for just a little bit just basically it's just a deck lid without anything else on it and that's when you run into issues above 140. so very very streamlined look car like that so when i had a setup like that it was the carbon fiber deck lid uh i have pictures videos of the car making passes like that I had issues like that. If your car was less than 140 miles an hour, I wouldn't worry about it. You could get away with just that and not have an issue. But if you really want to push a car, you really want to make sure the car is planted at speed, go ahead and throw uh, a drag wing, drag spoiler on that, which will help a little bit. You can get away with just a little spoiler as well. But honestly, I think just like the normal, every basically everyone's like a GT style, style just small pet. Uh, pedestal spoiler a lot of people run that and I just like being different with my cars so I want to do something different than that um, but yeah I mean you can if you want to stay under 100, 140 miles an hour but I would definitely look into something above that just to keep the car stable because at that speed really anything can happen you get out there a little little shake little quiver anything like that and if you don't know what you're doing it can go bad really really quickly the APR one was insane in person, but I like the stock one the most. I do agree. Looking back at some pictures, I think this right here is one of my favorite looks of the car. Obviously, it's a bad photo, but like just like the stock look, that was had twins on it, just some drag uh, radials, B locks. I think the car looks really good there. Um, but yeah, this, the APR one I think looked better in person. Everyone who saw it online said it just looked terrible, didn't like the way it looked. But then people come see it in person, like, oh, that looks good. I think pictures that didn't do it justice, everyone was expecting it to be, I guess, more in your face. I mean, it was still in your face. It still definitely looked big, stuff like that. But it didn't overdo. I didn't have it 16 inches out of the side of the car or anything like that. It was, it was high, but it was in proportion with everything. I'll take stick figures hanging up on the fridge for the wife. Uh, I don't even know if the stick figures are good enough to hang up on that fridge. Do you recommend shocks in the front? I have Vikings in the back. I would do the same for the front. Absolutely. So I went ahead and went four setup uh, front and rear. I did coilovers for the front. I had uh, ultras and then crusaders I was running. So the back, the front definitely, 
I don't know what suspension the front of your car has, um, but with the mag ride, basically we were having issues of basically the shocks stretching all the way out. Launching the car, you know, like people always say you want the car to squat, not so much. You don't want the car to squat, you just want like the car to kind of come up. But when the car comes up, the front end, the obviously weight, some, you'll have some weight transfer, sit back, the nose comes up. We're ha we were having issues with the mag ride fully extending and then basically they just don't know how to react when they're fully extended. A few other GT500 over almost wrecked off launch simply because nose come up, car cuts power trying to correct because the mag ride, so we just eliminated it. Actually ended up being the more data we got on it. It was a safety thing, not running the mag ride if you're running big, big power on these cars. But yeah, I would definitely throw a front, some suspension up front. It's probably gonna be lighter than your factory suspension and a lot more adjustability. You can, depending, if you're doing street stuff, you can have more uh, weight transfer. If you're at the track, you can keep it more solid so the car just launches and goes. You can adjust ride quality more. Obviously, it won't be as good as stock. People say that, like, oh, it drives just like stock. Just like stock. It's not going to. Any aftermarket parts are going to drive differently unless you buy aftermarket OEM parts. That's not it. Unless you, drive, unless you buy aftermarket OEM parts. That's just how it is. It's like a child I'm always getting this stuff as soon as I look away. But I would definitely, I would throw, I will get some Vikings. Uh, I mean... Just some drag, if you're, if you're looking for a street car, just some drag spec uh, shocks. We can, you can reach out to me and I can go over more with you. There's just too much. It depends on goals, weight of the car. All that stuff plays into on what valve you do, all that stuff. R reach out and we can go over that if you want. But I would definitely throw something on the front. That way you have a more rounded setup versus just something in the back. Because your front is going to limit what the back is able to do. Uh, one last question, what do you do for a living? Uh, I just, I'm a pharmacist, so nothing too extreme there. But yeah, definitely try to keep it as, as balanced as possible. The OEM stuff just isn't capable of doing most likely what you want to do. And obviously you're making, you said you were making 960. Yeah, you said you were making 960. The 10 or 80, obviously, you're making pretty decent power. If you're making that kind of power, you're going to want at least a better setup. All right, guys, so what do you think? Uh, you guys have any topics you want to go over in the future, anything like that? I can, or you guys just uh, looking for... We got a little bit of time, so basically, just ask, get your opinion. Do you guys want, do you have any topics you want to go in the future, or do you just want me to keep going over what I've been going over, just throwing stuff out there, and you just getting on and watching? <laughs> this guy saying nothing too extreme as a school isn't horrendous. I'm struggling over here with the same program. Well, when you're in it, it's terrible, and then you get out, and you're like, well, oh, that wasn't too bad, but you'll get there. You just basically got to take it one day at a time. If you get too far ahead of yourself, it's you never get caught back up. That's just the way it is. One day at a time. Ooh, I might as well throw this in here. Simply because I'll probably never talk about it. It'll probably be never enough to do a full video on it. So I'm just throw this in for this one tire setups very quickly so if you're running a bias ply in the front run a bias ply in the rear so basically most people run a bias ply in the rear if you run a bias ply in the rear and then a radial up front it will be terrible basically I've, I've ridden I didn't do it to the car myself but I've ridden the car like it it just all over the place it feels terrible but for some reason if you run a bias ply rear run a bias ply front car drives fine don't ask me why but radial front radial real uh, rear that's fine but just make sure if you are running a bias ply like a hoosier or something like that 100 percent run the bias ply up front or else the ride quality would be absolutely terrible the wing talking calculations from the one video uh, did was quite interesting do maybe the calculations with different wings 
Uh, what do you? What were you thinking? What wings? Uh, I got a few that I'm looking on right now. Obviously, APR has a few different uh, wing setups they were doing. Uh, I picked just the GTC 300 because it was uh, smaller. I wanted to do uh, 500, but it was just too big for the application I want, things like that. So I can do other wings if you guys want. If you have wings that you're looking for, like if you guys will wanting to buy or anything, I can send you the drag stuff like that so that way you guys know kind of what you're getting if it is adjustable wing that's honestly the best simply because you can basically your driving style obviously it'll take a while to get to get to know your driving style a lot of people are like oh yeah i'm a good driver i know my driving style no you don't getting behind the wheel making laps stuff like that you actually learn how you are compared to other people what you like doing i spend a lot of time so i have a sim setup for this, not for Forza, but for, that I use for this. Um, I use a sim setup every once in a while. Used to use it a lot before I got my SCCA uh, license. Before that, uh, it was just sim, because I didn't have the car, so I couldn't use that. Stop, what are you doing? So I did a lot of time, a lot of simulation stuff, and it actually really helped. Those people looking to get into it, just some cheap, just a cheap steering wheel. Uh, with, make sure it has some type of feedback on it so you know when the car is spinning, losing traction, stuff like that, and just work on your lines. That's the biggest thing you can do, just work on your lines. And you learn your driving style. I'll get to some of these more comments. Any plans to get a new ride? Uh, I have a couple. Uh, probably going to wait just a little bit. I have a couple. Uh, I have a series that I'm kind of weighing the option if I want to do. Um, basically... Since you guys are online uh, with me right now, I'll give you kind of a sneak peek to it. Uh, basically, I want to put vehicles up against that. So obviously, you guys know uh, I had basically this car right here. I don't know how well you can see it, but GT500, uh, basically a track attack car. Very, 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 very fun to drive. Uh, not too many cars will handle like this, but it was expensive. A lot, your weekend warriors, things like that, you're not going to be able to go in, buy this car, and then just cut it up. I mean, you can, but you're probably, you're take, probably taking out a loan for the car. You're probably taking out, maxing out credit cards for everything we did. Like, I got a lot of stuff through sponsors, things like that, which really, really helped. I do appreciate everyone who helped, um, everything along the way, but... Not everyone's going to be able to just walk in, pay for it right away, and then just pay for everything that was done to it. Some people can. Cool. Not everyone can. So why I want to do something that you might already have in your garage, something that so you can acquire easily. And my goal is, can we make it as fast as that? Obviously, it might not be as fast as that, but how close can we get is more so the goal. Uh, I'm not going to give away too much, still weighing the options, kind of thinking about how I want to set up the series, stuff like that, if it's even feasible for me to do, because I don't want to have to spend, I don't want to be 30k into a 5k car. Like, you know what I'm saying? So we'll evaluate, run some numbers, things like that, that'll probably be down the road just a little bit, but ultimately the goal would be to get some, like a Shelby Daytona, make it like a time attack car, something like this, lots of aero. I was actually thinking about maybe throwing some active aero parts on that that I've been kind of making sketches for, designs, talking with people. So I think throwing some active aero on that, maybe Predator mode with the DCT swap would be super cool if we can get all the tuning and stuff like that. But that's down the road a little bit. So yeah, definitely some plans coming up. Uh, I'm going to try to get out of this into a different house, which is kind of pushing things back just a little bit versus me just going in and grabbing everything. Dragwing is the best looking. Honestly... That picture I used, so I have two pictures I really used of the car. Uh, the one right after Mod Nats, carbon hood, it had the factory doors, it had the signature wheels, and the drag wing. Come here. Come here. And the drag wing. That is one of my all time favorite pictures of the car. And then the one I included for this video with the two cars in the back of the trailer, I thought the car looked really good right there. Honestly, the drag wing looked really, really good with the car. I will agree with that. Uh, just some common wings and stuff. PP1, duck bills, drag wings, uh, big wings, etc. Well, that's a lot of different type of wings there, uh, buddy. 
literally that you could incorporate every type of wing in the world into that. So it is what it is. I don't think I'll be doing that many. Specifically tell me which wing you want to see numbers on and I'll do it, but I'm not just going to randomly pick some because then ultimately someone's going to be like, well, what, what about this one? And then I will, knowing my luck, I'll do calculations for a wing no one wants and I'll do no calculations for the wing people actually want. You're going to get a weakened warrior that you can rip on Sundays, aka the Raptor, that one special car, and a weakened warrior. Uh, well, I don't know. Might be getting rid of the Raptor, actually. That'll be down the road a little bit. Thinking about my eye on a trimmer, actually. Would love uh, just some. So basically, the Raptor is really nice, but really, really expensive vehicle, if you guys know. I'm thinking more something that I can just like beat up on a trail, jump it, not worry about it, just have a great time, give you that kind of videos. So might be moving away from, away from the Raptor if the right deal comes up. If the right deal doesn't come up, I'll keep it and just enjoy it because that is a fun vehicle to just rip through some back roads and stuff like that. Something like a PP1 Mustang GT. Yeah, I can do that. I'll write that down for you. Just so then, because otherwise I will forget. I have to write everything down. I'll get some, that, if I remember correct, correctly, it's kind of more of a, no, the PP2 is more of a basic. I wish the PP2 had the PP1 ring, wing, but that's just me. Straight boss, thank you, thank you. Did you have the MMR drag wing on car? I did, yeah. So I had the MMR drag wing on this channel. I posted a video of the unveiling. I was not happy with it, I will be honest. It So in my mind, it was full finished carbon. Got it, the wing end pieces for carbon, perfect, beautifully done. Couldn't have asked for a better, better piece of carbon other than some of the pieces from Anderson that I got. The main body of the wing looked terrible. I was so disappointed opening that up. Uh, Watch the video because it was more than just the wing that I had issues with. I had issues with missing parts. Uh, basically my hardware thing was open. I can't, I don't, I'm not saying it was their issue, but they sent me half the hardware. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a frustrating piece. So what I did was I just went online, uh, Metro Restyling is who I used, ordered just a carbon fiber, uh, wrap, ordered a bunch of just sample sizes and matched the weave pattern as close as I could to the rear deck of the car, which I actually, I found perfect weave pattern and a slightly different it was a slightly different shimmer so basically obviously carbon that's been cured is going to look different than a wrap that's just the way it is but from the pictures oh stop it you big baby come here is it basically carbon weave and like on a wrap and carbon weave on like a finished piece is going to look slightly different. So I got it just as close as possible. And I think it turned out actually looking really, really good. Just wrapped it myself. I did it in my living room. It wasn't hard. Just take your time. I wrapped the edges, all that stuff. So I mean, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I ended up doing, I wrapped the uh, deck lid, that rear wing for that, uh, for that green Cobra jet as well. The guy saw mine and then I wrapped his as well so it ended up working out because i had i had some extra so it ended up working out real nicely both cars got done both looked really really nice so i'm going to open it up to you guys Name some cars that you either have or you guys are wanting right now. And we'll, we'll talk about them for a little bit. I got some time. Uh, work schedule got changed. I don't have to get off at er as early tonight. Don't have to basically don't have to work when we're done with this. So get on. Let me know what you guys dream cars. Okay, obviously, if it's a dream car, specify it's a dream car, then tell me. Don't say that you have. Like if you have a some Ferrari or something. I don't want you to say that you own it and you don't. Let's not do that. But like anything you own that you guys want to talk about, dream cars, let's get them going. Fox Body Coupe, which one? You can't tell me Fox Body Coupe without saying which one. Because anyone, like any actual Mustang person knows Fox Body is 
basically half of the Mustang life right there. R34 GTR, 91. Okay, I can do that. 91. How would you spec it out, though? Would it be just a drag build? Are we talking, is this your car? Or are we talking something that you'd want? Because honestly, I've been thinking about building just like a, a cruiser, getting like a 93 Fox body, black, with like the, not chrome wheels, but like those aluminum polish wheels. That's been, I've been thinking about doing that lately and I don't know why. R34, uh, not just like a plain R34. 69 Camaro. Yeah, I can dig that. See, like you guys will learn, I'm not just a Ford guy. I used to be just straight Ford, 444, but I've gotten away with we, future videos we can talk about. They just have done some things that I don't like recently. Um, so I've gotten away with them. I definitely more so now, I appreciate everything like ZR1s, stuff like that. Won't get too much into what I like. We can do that for future videos. For me, I know this is gonna be terrible. An 03 Termi. Oh, there it is, my dream car. I've already with an 04 Cobra. I wouldn't say an 04 Cobra is my dream car, but that's funny that you say that because I was just bringing it up. But I would just love to build one. I'm thinking, so my first car was a 2001 mineral gray Mustang. Nothing special about it. You know what it is, what it is. It's the first car. But that that like mineral gray, dark gray metallic that Ford had for those years, the SN95 cars, like absolutely beautiful. Give it a little low, some nice wheels, and I think that would just be perfect. Uh, Cobras can make, you know, great power if you want them to, or you can just leave them stock, which I don't know why people would do, but you can do that too and just have a great time with them. I think that would be just a great car just to, you know, just drive. And honestly, 2003 valve sound better. There, I said it. I know, it's controversial, but like a cam three valve, like, like, don't hate me. Next time you see a cam three valve, like actually listen to it. Don't be like, oh, it's a three, no, actually listen to it. Sit there and just listen to the way it sounds. I think they sound phenomenal. Two valves, a cam two valve sounds phenomenal. Coyotes just don't. Like coyotes, obviously you're looking at like the power potential, all that stuff, but it just don't sound that great. Like if you're looking for something, just a cruise, make 300 horsepower, maybe 400 if you're really pushing it, and just have a good time. Three valve, two valve, and they just they just sound phenomenal. But my opinion. <laughs> no, sir. Dream car is an SS. Uh, R34 V-Spec 1 in red. Only about any of those, I think. I don't know the difference between a V-Spec 1 and a V-Spec 2. I'll have to look that up later. But V-Spec, said that, perfect. Uh, just don't know the difference between the two. I already have it. Ruby Red 5-speed, Black Interior 302 Vortex Supercharger. Mm. Send me a picture of that, please. I wish we could post pictures on this just because I want to see it. Uh, are you on Instagram? Send, put your Instagram up and I'll follow you. If you have pictures of it. If you don't have pictures of it and you don't have Instagram, don't worry about it. But... That seems perfect. Ruby red. My second Mustang was a candy red metallic. So you'll guys see, I like orange, I like the grays, and I like the reds. So the ruby red, I think, is perfect. I have a red fire, Whipple 2.9. Red fire, okay, I am jealous. I had a chance to buy a red fire four years ago passed on it because I wanted too much and now the same car is almost double the price so miss that one it is what it is red fire I think is a fantastic color as well get the itch of drag racing it but I'm not I drive around Los Angeles City and I love the attention yeah I mean for real that car just absolutely stands out um 2.9 Whipple man I bet that thing is just an absolute blast to drive like for real <clears throat> Man, I'm just sitting here thinking about it. Red Fire 2.9 Whipple. Yeah, just cruise that thing. Don't, I mean, obviously, you, it's your car. Do whatever you want. But, like, I would just love just driving that thing around. 
got something else to turn into a drag car. I mean, you can put slicks on it and like drive it if you want to, but I would just leave it as that is really and just have a great time with it. I'll have to look it up later, but I'm about to drive home from work. See ya. See ya. Uh, lame that you have to work, but I know you got to pay the bills. That school is not cheap. All right, I'm getting this ball. I'm tired of him complaining. Where'd you put it? Oh, there it is. Ugh. Come here. Okay. Okay. Do you have an Instagram? Redfire, Whipple29. I follow someone that has almost that exact same setup from California. Uh, if it, it, go ahead and post, if you do, post it, because I wonder if you're who I'm thinking. I'm not gonna name, not gonna name drop, because I know some people get mad if you call them by the, like a different handle than what they are. Uh, so not gonna name drop if that's not you, but let me know if you are, and I think that would be kind of cool if I already follow you. <laughs> Future things coming up, I think it'll be pretty cool. Uh, making a video, basically for you like weekend warriors. Obviously, some of you guys already have pretty nice cars, so make a decent power. I want to do something, you know, not much power. Have something, basically have like some type of budget that you have that I like can't go over, and just see how it works. And just see if we can just basically have some fun with it. Ugh. Well, there it is, guys. I'm probably going to get off now. Uh, enjoy you guys. I enjoyed you guys getting on, just hanging out, having a good time. Like I said, like, see, the more people that get involved with these, the more fun we can have. We can just hang out, kind of talk, talk some shit if, a little bit. That's more to come. Uh, but, yeah, continue on Wednesday is going to basically keep the same format. Talk for a little bit. Answer your questions. Bring questions. Bring friends. Because I know some of my favorite live obviously on other people's live videos, getting two friends on and just having, going back and forth and just seeing everyone's reactions is, was, was a lot of fun. So I'm getting off guys. Appreciate you come hang out for a little bit. Uh, obviously shoot me messages. If you guys have any questions about anything, if you guys want to see content in the future, let me know down for everything. Just start following me on Insta. Yep. Yeah, you did. I, uh, for sure. Uh, I'll go ahead and give that. I can't remember if I followed you back. Sorry. It's, uh, I wish I would look right now, but I'm using my phone, and obviously, I'll go ahead. If I didn't follow you already, I'll give you a follow back. That I will do. Okay, guys, so I am getting off now. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see anything in the future. Uh, questions, comments, let me know, but until then, I'll see y'all soon.